is good everybody welcome to an epic my damn toys video tonight i have your full wwe draft rosters ready to go guys the draft is finally complete the wwe draft 2019 is finished all of monday night raw and all of friday night smackdown are completely finished as far as the draft goes there are a bunch of notable free agents like a ton of free agents that have not yet signed and there are a lot of guys you know coming back from injury and things of that nature which we will cover in this video but i don't know about you guys but i'm super duper happy with this draft being over with i feel like wwe we totally like undermined it. I don't feel like they put their best foot forward. It seemed like they forced a lot of things, you know, with the analysts and the war room looking very cringy and just a bunch of things going on with it. I'm very glad that it's over with and hopefully now that we have definitive rosters for both Raw and SmackDown, hopefully we can get on the right track to good entertaining television. I don't expect anything crazy, but you know, I still remain hopeful even though, you know, it's just every week, man. It's just harder and harder to watch. But we're going to break down these rosters, guys, and just kind of tell you guys what's going on, what the rosters look like right now and how they could unfold in the future regarding all of these free agents that we have guys again there's a ton of free agents a ton of women that did not go to any of these rosters and actually after this draft the rosters are very thin at least smackdown side of things there's like barely anybody on roster and you guys will see that as we come out and tell you guys exactly how both rosters look so starting things off on monday night raw side of things guys there are only 24 single superstars you have your universal champion seth rollins obviously united states champion aj styles Drew McIntyre, Randy Orton, Ricochet, Bobby Lashley, Kevin Owens, Andrade, Rusev, Alistair Black, Samoa Joe, Rey Mysterio, R-Truth, EC3, Eric Young, Sin Cara, Cedric Alexander, Humberto Carrero, Eric Rowan, Buddy Murphy, Jinder Mahal, Akira Tozawa, Shelton Benjamin, and Titus O'Neil. Now, when you look at this roster, guys, it's actually kind of stacked. I mean, you have Rollins, Styles, Orton, Ricochet, Kevin Owens, Andrade, Alistair Black, Cedric Alexander, Rusev, Samoa Joe, Buddy Murphy, Drew McIntyre, tons and tons of talent over here and I'm kind of worried because you know some guys over here they're just not going to get the opportunity to shine on the red brand like they would if they were over on Smackdown Live. Now going forward guys we're going to cover the women's division real quick and they have way more women than Smackdown side of things. We have Becky Lynch obviously the Raw Women's Champion up front. We have Alexa Bliss, Natalia, Nikki Cross, Charlotte Flair, Zelina Vega, the Kabuki Warriors, Asuka, and Kyrie Sane and Liv Morgan and I'm actually excited to see Liv Morgan come back. I think she was getting better before she went away and changed her character. I'm excited to see what she gets going on once she returns. If you guys can't see, Asuka, Nikki Cross, and Natalya are back here in the back. Wanted sort of, sort of, you know, the more notable names up front, even though I think Asuka should be front and center. But anyways, getting back into the Raw roster, guys, we only have three tag teams on this Raw roster, okay? We have the Viking Raiders, who just recently won the Raw Tag Team Championships. I do not have figures of them because we have not gotten them from Mattel just yet, and I'm not crazy about making customs of them at the moment, but I am a huge fan of the Viking Raiders, though. Them, the OC, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, which are back here. And then we have the Street Profits, who were called up from NXT, I guess. I didn't expect any call-ups from NXT, but we did get some, I guess. Which were, They were kind of flirting with the main roster anyways, right? I mean, they were flipping back and forth. They were obviously on Monday Night Raw every single week. Friday Night SmackDown even, so. The OC and the Street Profits actually started a uh, feud tonight on Monday Night Raw anyways. So that there's your feud right there. But that's only three tag teams. So I don't know if we're going to get some more tag teams merged together right here. I think a really good tag team between all of these people. I think I'd like to see Shelton Benjamin and Cedric Alexander possibly get a team going. Maybe Buddy Murphy and Kevin Owens or something crazy. I don't know. I would just like to see another tag team come forward whether it be whoever. But as far as the singles division is, is concerned, there is a ton of talent here and it is totally stacked on Raw side of things. But moving it over to SmackDown Live side of things, I keep calling it SmackDown Live. You guys know what the hell I mean. So as far as Friday Night SmackDown singles division is concerned guys, we have 16 male performers in the singles division. We have Brock Lesnar, the WWE WWE Champion, obviously. We have Shinsuke Nakamura, the Intercontinental Champion, with Sami Zayn. Roman Reigns, the Fiend Bray Wyatt. Braun Strowman, Kofi Kingston, Daniel Bryan, Ali, The Miz, Trash Corbin, Shorty Gable, Elias, Apollo, Drew Gulak, and Heath Slater. Now, when you compare this singles division compared over to Raw side of things, it is definitely underwhelming. I mean, you have maybe a few notable names right here, but not nearly as stacked as Monday Night Raw. And when you go to the women's division, guys, it even gets worse. You have Bayley, your SmackDown Women's Champion, Sasha Banks, Lacey Evans, Tamina, and Carmella. That is only two 
proven in-ring workers for SmackDown. So when we get into the uh, the free agent pool for the women, I think that SmackDown is definitely going to be picking up a ton of women in the free agent market. I'm sure some people are going to be returning to in from injury. I think Ronda Rousey actually is going to return, I'm sure, very, very soon, and she will be over on Fox. You know, Fox wants Ronda Rousey. they got to have Brock. they got to have Ronda. They're going to have Ronda, and I think that's going to fill out our women's division to go along with some other people returning from injury, give those women some more opportunities, and some of them will go over to Raw, but SmackDown desperately needs women's talent. Now, when we enter the tag team division of SmackDown, guys, we have a ton more teams from SmackDown over to Raw. We have double the teams, actually. You have the Revival, which are the SmackDown uh, SmackDown Tag Team Champions. You have the New Day, Big E and Xavier Woods. You have Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode, who obviously just lost their Raw Tag titles. I expect them to break off into single stars. I think that would be better for them to get mingled in, into the single men's division, you know, as their own separate beings. Dolph Ziggler, mainly, that's my boy. I want him to get a push up to the top, and I like him better for SmackDown to get elevated up. You also have Lucha House Party with Kaliso, Lince Dorado, and Grand Metalik, Heavy Machinery, Otis and Tucker, and the B-Team, Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. And that pretty much rounds out your SmackDown rosters, guys. I mean, there's not a ton of talent over on SmackDown compared to Raw. I mean, you guys can see here, look at all the people over here compared to over here. There's definitely a big shift in the numbers. And of course, I don't have figures of every single person, obviously, but what I want to do real quick before we get out of here, guys, is I do want to take a quick little look at the free agent market because there is actually a ton of talent that needs to be sorted and we'll get through that and then we will complete our roster videos for WWE 2019 following the draft. So as far as notable free agents go for both guys, we have some undrafted men such as Cesaro, Luke Harper, it says Apollo Crews but I could have sworn he, he was drafted over to SmackDown, Mojo Raleigh, No Way Jose, undrafted women which we will get into. We'll get into the undrafted women after this portion but also we have some undrafted tag teams such as AOP, Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, the Usos, possibly Sheamus returning from injury. Jeff and Matt Hardy, another team that I think will show up. I think that they would be fantastic for either division on Raw or SmackDown. I feel like Raw is totally stacked in their singles division. I feel like they would fit way better on SmackDown. Even though SmackDown has more teams, I feel like you could disband some teams, put them in the singles division, and you could do the same thing with the Hardys if you wanted, but I think they would be great going after those SmackDown titles they never lost. So when they come back from injury regarding Jeff, you know, he had to be put on the, on the shelf. They should have been using Matt Hardy anyway to, you know, build up some singles and get him ready for when Jeff returns. But some other notables here, guys, are Lo Lars Sullivan still recovering from injury. I really don't care for him, though. I, I, I honestly, if he never was to wrestle again, that, that would be okay with me. But I hate that he got injured, though. I don't want, you know, I don't want, I don't wish any ill will on anybody. I'm just not a fan of the guy. Mike and Maria Kanellis, The Ascension, The Colognes, Cain Velasquez, John Cena, The Undertaker, obviously, but those those guys are, you know, they're their own thing. They're part-timey slash retired slash. Uh, I don't think they're going to be full-time performers. But anyways, very interesting situation. I do expect all of these participants right here to return. Maybe not Sheamus, but I do expect everyone pictured here to, in one day, yeah, I don't know if you can see Mojo Rawley, but uh, there he is. I expect all of these guys to get picked up and you know what? I mean, the, the rosters are just so deep. There's no really way to get these guys on television, man. I mean, the, the rosters are so deep anyway. This is why you don't call up talent when they're not ready, and this is why you don't have to sign everyone in the John Brown world. Some of these guys, that I, I can tell you right now, some of the this talent needs to go to AEW or some other places for sure. Because they're never, oh, Allie. Because they're definitely not getting on television anytime soon with these deep rosters. And here are some notable free agent women, guys, who did not pick, get picked up by either brand. You have Nia Jax, Ruby Riot, Ember Moon, Sonya Deville, Mandy Rose, The Iconics, Billy Kay and Peyton Royce. Naomi, and there are some others such as Sarah Logan and a couple others. But I think that all of these women, again, will be picked up somewhere because both women's divisions are pretty shallow, so I think they definitely need to add to the women's divisions, and what a better way than to add these women to these divisions and make them deeper, especially SmackDown Live, because they only have five, and not all of them are even in-ring competitors. So they definitely could use a lot of this depth. But anyways, guys, that pretty much does it for your WWE rosters for Monday Night Raw and SmackDown following the WWE Draft 2019. Again, I'm very glad that draft is over with so that we can move on and get some more things going on. I will say the end of Monday Night Raw was actually pretty interesting. Uh, the whole show was pretty much awful besides, you know, a match here and there. And then the last final uh, moments, I think it was like the last two minutes of the show, with Seth Rollins showing up and burning down the Firefly Funhouse, I, I was actually really intrigued by that. You also had, you know, I know that WWE messed up at Hell in a Cell with The Fiend and Seth Rollins, but I actually was intrigued by the, by the little moment there at the end where he burned it down and he had like a very dark side. He was getting booed. I would love to see a heel turn by Seth Rollins, but I'm not sure they're going to give it to us, man. But it's the perfect time to turn him heel. But you can't have the Fiend, Bray Wyatt, and the WWE Champion Brock Lesnar on the same brand with the Universal and WWE Championship. 
However, there is supposed to be a blockbuster trade going down tomorrow night on the little WWE backstage segment. So I don't know where that fits in. Also, if you're wondering, I think John Morrison will be on SmackDown considering how thin they are over here. John Morrison, if he doesn't go to NXT, will most definitely be on SmackDown if he ever shows up. Also, there's rumors of Edge returning to in-ring competition. Also, SmackDown bound. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel for more epic WWE figure videos. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MyDamnToys, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you.